Welcome. My name is Marco, Marco Biancardi, and uh, I practice Chinese medicine for a long time. And uh, I just wanted to offer this class to uh, all these uh, time travelers that come from all over the world to, to Bali to experience this magnificent festival. And uh, this presentation so is about jet lag, it's about using uh, traditional Chinese medicine uh, acupuncture point to, uh, to stimulate and, and balance the body and to, uh, what do you say, to bring, uh, to bring you in tune, in sync with the time where we are here at this moment, you know. Uh, it's, I kind of wanted to split a little bit the lecture in two parts. One more kind of a uh, hands-on where we're gonna learn about this acupuncture point. They're basically just 12 acupuncture points. And by the way, we're not gonna use any needle. It's not about, uh, they're called acupuncture point, but we're just gonna use a finger pressure or you can actually use your pencil to stimulate the point. They're very easy. There's only 12 points to memorize. But before we go into that, I wanted to kind of introduce a little bit of the element of traditional Chinese medicine or uh, holistic medicine, because I felt that if, it just, if it just what you do is learning the point, you're just learning, you learn to do something mechanical, it's just too much left brain, you're just, you learn a technique, you do it, yeah, it's gonna work, but it feels like you're, you're doing something but you don't understand what you're doing. So I wanted to give you a little bit of the basic, some of the basic theory of, uh, of Chinese medicine and holistic medicine. And so we're gonna go on a little journey here. And I prepared some slides because it can, sometimes it's, it's difficult to explain some concepts that sometimes, uh, like uh, they're not left brain concepts, they're right brain concepts. So you have to, it's more kind of an experiential factor, you know, when you talk about uh, the cosmo and the body and how we are all connected together. So first of all, I wanted to start. By the way, you know that, you know, planet Earth is spinning around its own axis, right? So do you have, any, have you ever wonder how, what's the speed, how fast we are moving around planet Earth? Just, a, just as a factor. You know that the sun is not rising, it's not setting. It's the planet Earth that is spinning, right? Yeah. You, we all know this, right? Yes? Yes. Oh, okay. So, have you ever wondered what's the spin of planet Earth? How fast are we moving? Very fast. <laughs> right now, because we are on the equator, you are actually moving at the fastest speed that you could actually move, which is 1,600 kilometers per hour. If you were sitting, you know, if this is the axis, if you were sitting on the North Pole, you basically would be zero speed. It will take you 24 hours to do one spin. But because you're sitting on the planet Earth on the equator, which is the, because the Earth is round, is the largest part, you're actually spinning at 1,600 kilometers per hour. And of course, as you move north toward the northern hemisphere, the speed slow down. I actually have, a, I have, a, I have one that I want to show you, yeah, just to show that I don't, I don't make this thing up. You see, if you are at the equator, we are moving at this speed, 1,600 kilometers per hour. But if you are on the North Pole, you actually are zero. Never thought about that? Yeah. And then, you know, there are many speed, you know, these are actually the other one, you know. Uh, the Earth move around the Sun at the speed of 30 kilometers per second. The Sun move around the galaxy and so on. So, why is it that we are moving at this incredible speed and nothing really happened, you know, we're just living our life normally there is no symptoms, discomfort, you know. And then you do a small trip of a thousand, five thousand kilometer and the whole body goes out of sync. It's pretty amazing if you ask yourself, you know, I mean, w w why? I mean, we're moving so fast and then just a small distance on planet Earth can cause all of these symptoms inside our body. Well, we're gonna find out why. 
So first of all, I would like to bring in some ca some concept, you know, of uh, where east and west point of view differ in terms of uh, medicine and how we view our body. So, you know. In the West, the body is seen as a machine, you know. Every part of the body function as a, as a function. The, the, the heart is a pump. The, the muscle is supposed to move the body. The, the skeletal, skeletal system is supposed to support the body. Uh, the kidney is a water pump and so on. Uh, basically, every part is kind of separate, you know. Uh, when there is a disease, we kind of declare war and we use chemical uh, to adjust the body. And when something breaks down, we usually either put some screw or whatever is possible, <laughs> change the part. On the Easter point of view, it's nice, huh? <laughs> Look like remind me of my hippie time, you know? Flower power. The body is seen as a garden. Maybe it's got too many, too many uh, psychedelic drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the body is an integral part without landscape. It's not separate. So health, you cultivate health like you cultivate your garden, basically. So health is not opposite from disease. Health is a balanced state that you will acquire. It's a dynamic state that you maintain but by living in harmony with the environment around us. And also, originally, I, I put here, actually put natural and chemical, because they kind of know natural versus chemical. But then they realized it's not true. I mean, I really want to put holistic. Does anybody know what was the difference between hol holistic and natural? Come on. <laughs> you want to try? The whole. Yeah. Basically, holistic is something that implies the whole. And the whole in traditional Chinese medicine is always made up of the... We have a spiritual body, we have an emotional body, and we have a physical body. So when we treat, we always treat these three levels. The, 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 we always take an account for the... For the <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> for the energetic system, the emotional body, welcome, and the physical body. And that's why, in a way, actually, let's go to the, to the next, let's go a little bit deeper in the concept of Chinese medicine. I know that everybody recognizes the symbol of yin and yang, right? Do you know what it stands for? The balance, balance of what? Yeah, balance of the feminine and masculine. Basically, every living thing on this uh, material world is made out of opposite polarity, positive, negative, masculine, feminine, day, night, life, death. Everything is made up of these two polarity. And in Chinese medicine, every uh, diagnosis that we made, we always use these two concepts, the yin and yang. We always check in the body how the yin and the yang are in balance or out of balance. And therefore, the treatment that we do is always towards bringing balance into the body. And that's the concept of traditional Chinese medicine. So the yin and the yang, the concept of preventive medicine. And then this is the one that I really like the most. This is the one that really got me to Chinese medicine long, long time ago. It's basically that the concept of a, of a small universe living in a large universe. What they're talking is about, we are a macrocosmo reflecting the law of the macrocosmo. Everything that goes inside here goes inside itself. We are a fragment of the cosmo. Therefore, if we get to know the cosmo, we get to know what's going on inside this body. And if we heal this body, we heal the cosmo, we heal the universe. It really goes like this, you know, we are all one with the universe. Therefore, when you, we will say, when you do apply the pressure on this point, you have to also keep 
remember this symbol, you know, you're not just apply a finger pressure and expect that the magic happens, you're actually affecting the whole cosmos when they really mean it. We'll go a little bit deeper on that. Uh, here, here I, I use the pattern of universe because it's the universe inside ourselves. This is another famous sacred symbol that probably as famous as the yin yang. You've seen it everywhere. I mean, it's probably one of the most used graphic in the world. Anybody want to guess what, what it symbolizes? You know who did this one, right? Huh? No? Of course I know. Ah. I'm Italian. Leonardo da Vinci, yeah. right? Do you know what it's, it, it's, it's, you know why it's used so much? You know what it means? you have any idea what? The You're close. <laughs> the, <laughs> the square is the earth. And the circle. The circle is the sky sphere above. It's the sun. Huh? And the sphere above, the circle. I'm not sure what, what yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, they call it the, uh, the main square in the circle. Well, Leonardo da Vinci, was, he was trying to express, he was expressing the idea of uh, one of our ancestors from Rome, uh, first century Roman architect, uh, Marcus, Marcus uh, something, Vitruvius, Marcus Vitruvius. He was a first century uh, architect who his idea was that a temple, in order to be magnificent, it has to be built in analogy of the body, of the, of, the, of the measurement of the body, because within the body, every part is in harmony. We have perfection within our body. Therefore, what he was, trying, what he, 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 seemed, he was saying here is that the spam, the spam, spam, spam of the arms, you know, is equal to the height of a man forming a square <laughs> forming a square around the man the square symbolizes the earth the four corner of the earth <laughs> you know uh, the 3d world is a square you know well if you build if you do a circle with the center the umbilicals it's form not it's form a circle around the body which symbolize the universe which basically symbolize that the cosmo and the earth live within us. We are an integral system. We are not separated. We're all one with Earth and the Cosmo. And I'm trying to get this, this theory to explain it to you because you, you understand later on, I think it'll be easier to understand it is the, where the whole concept of circulation of Qi and energy came from Chinese medicine. So, we're getting into the cycle now, okay, that, that are more related to the, to the jet lag. Here we have a, the circle symbolizes the 24 hours, or one day cycle. You have the six o'clock, the sunrise, noon, sunset, and midnight. And chronobiology is a pretty a mo modern, uh, recent science. Basically, chronos is time and biology is life. So the study, the, f the relation between life and time. And, and what they're talking here is not about the time, the linear time, you know, the, the, the second, the minute, the minutes and the hour. They're talking about the one day cycle, you know, how, so by studying this, they, they, they create this chart and you can see that uh, in the mornings as you wake up, you know, the blood pressure rise, by eight o'clock you have a bowel movement, hopefully. Uh, by 10 o'clock you're high alert and, and so on. It goes on along the day. And then, you know, by, by six o'clock, you have a, a rise in the high blood pressure. And what they figure out, that, that actually, the way they use it is that if you apply the treatment at the right time, you can actually cut in half the medication. So what they found out that if you give a patient the medication for high blood pressure at six o'clock, you can actually cut in half the dosage and have less side effect. So that's important. And all living beings go through this cycle. We all share these. We all these in, yeah, we're in common. This is a 24-hour cycle. Of course,
Re regular medicine. Regular. Okay. I'm talking about Western medicine. This is this is the modern science. This is not Chinese medicine. This is chronobiology is a modern term. Like I say, it's a modern uh, branch of science. Uh, they are just starting to understand that the body is relating. There's a there's a, a living clock inside our cell. Before they were saying the body is there is no connection with the outside, you know. The heart is not connecting with any other organ, it's working independently. Everything is separate and compartmentalized. Now they try to they start to understand that it's not true. There is a living clock that is con directly connected to the cycle of, of, in this way, the day cycle. We have also longer cycle. And, uh, so that's what they're proving. And, and what, uh, what I'm showing here now is that that's no, this is nothing new. Traditional, this is Chinese medicine. Traditional men, Chinese medicine already long time ago knew that there is a body clock inside. So here we have the same thing. The circle symbolizes the one day cycle. The sunrise, midday, sunset, and midnight. And what they did, they separate each pi correspond to two hours. You know, there are 12 pi, there are 24 hours in a day. So each pi, pi correspond to uh, they say the energy move along the body according to go through meridian system pathway. And uh, these pathways are connected to the organs inside the body. So every two hours there is a peak in certain organs. And what this is showing you that from 5 to 7 a.m. the energy is concentrated in the large intestine. And if you remember on the other one, you say, what do you do with five to seven? You go to the bathroom, right? If your body is healthy. Seven to nine, uh, by the way, LI stands for large intestine, ST stands for stomach, SP stands for spleen. And you have this information also on the chart that you are uh, in there. So seven to nine is the stomach. That's when we're supposed to eat and nourish our body. It's gonna give us the energy and then becomes 9 to 11 the spleen and so on. So, as you can see, this, basically this cycle, these are the cycles that get disrupted when we travel through time zone. Do you see now where I'm trying, where, where I'm going? So, so let's go to the next, the next one. No, wait. Well, yeah, let's go to the next one. <laughs> so we're talking, this basically are the meridian. We, I, I, I was saying that the energy flow through a meridian system. There are 12 branch, 12 meridian. Each meridian is connected to an organ. And then along the meridian, we have the, the acupuncture point. And what this acupuncture point are really point of light, you know, and, and I mean, I, I'll never forget my first acupuncture treatment. Anybody's got a tri acupuncture here? Have you experienced it? And it was a long time ago when I, I, I had a treatment for I had some knee problem. And but anyway, just the idea that by sticking a needle in these points of light, of energy that you actually don't see, you know, there is, a, you know, it, that it could trigger benefit, health benefit to me was like, it sounded like magic to me. I mean, it's a wow, point of light in the body that you cannot see. Meridian system where the energy flow that you cannot see. So, you can see that the analogy of that each point correspond to a star. So, if you take it a little bit farther, you know, the, then our ancestor didn't have the possibility to cut our body and find out how many organs we have inside and how the body ran. They just knew that if you understood the cosmos, you knew how the body worked. So they studied the star and they divided this, you know, they figure out there are 12 constellations. And if you think about a constellation, what a constellation is, is a group of star united but an invisible line that is not there. We make it up in a way, you know? But it, we make it up because it's easier to remember. If I see, oh, that's a Scorpio, I can't remember. I know that when I see the Scorpio, that means that it's November. And uh, when I see Pisces, you know, I draw a line, you know, it, the line is not there. It's just an invisible line that we create. 
So they say if there is 12 constellation, there must be 12 meridian in our body. There must be 12 constellation in our body. So the body, the constellation became the pathway where the energy flow. And then they say, okay, there is 365 days in a year, so there must be 365 acupuncture point in the body. The whole Chinese medicine is based out of astronomy, of astrology. So anytime, that's why we're, we're saying that every acupuncture point corresponds to a star. And what I was saying that when you actually apply, when you actually consciously apply stimulation on this point, you are actually connected with the cosmos. You are united yourself with the cosmos. This is an important aspect of Chinese medicine and of any medicine really, you know. It's like you come here to learn yoga and all you're concerned you do the, your, your pose without, without the physiology that's behind yoga, you know. You, you first, maybe you might start doing the pose and then you realize that, well, you know, when I breathe, uh, when I expand, I breathe in, when I contract, I breathe out. And then soon you're gonna, you, it become a lifestyle, you know, the, the yoga star change is not just a physical exercise. That suddenly then you start changing your diet, then later on maybe you start changing the way you dress, then then uh, your friends start looking at you and say, hey, you look different, what's going on with you, you know? Well, you know, come, try it, I'm doing some... Because you, you apply, the yoga is not just the exercise, you, there's a lifestyle that goes behind, there's a philosophy of living, a conscious way of living that goes behind the yoga. So, the same is here, you know. If all I give you is the, a memorization of this point, what you're doing, what we're doing, we're just taking an incredible beautiful gift from our ancestor and apply to a western concept of mechanical thing i do this because it help headache that's actually usually what most of the doctor western doctor that apply acupuncture they use acupuncture do they use acupuncture but with western concepts they use it symptomatically i use this because it relieves headache i use this point because it it treats the stomach i use this point because it's good for menstrual cycle and so on they're really not, you, you know, it's, like I said, they're practicing Western medicine using acupuncture point, basically. So, I would like, basically, when we do now, we're going into the, learning the point, I want you to, to, uh, to think of this, you know, that we actually, we're literally, when you stimulate a point, you're actually activating a star somewhere in the universe. Yes. I really believe that. I might feel like crazy, but it's not a belief. I mean, you, you know what you are in. I mean, you understand. We are one with the cosmos. There, there's no separation. It's you know, it's, it's, and you know, it's interesting. Also, one of the, one, uh, and then we go to the point. One of the most, uh, the most ancient text in Chinese medicine. It's around three thousand years old. It was written by the Yellow Emperor, which he was very interested. He, he actually is the one that made the foundation for Chinese medicine. And he used to gather is the man of of knowledge, you know, the, the priest, the the monk, the astronomer, the doctor, the healer, and he will ask them questions and say, and one of the questions he was asking was, what is the best modality? What is the best, most effective modality to treat any disease? And in those days, the modality were, I think the first one was herbs, natural herbs. Uh, then there was massage, but more kind of manipulation, like a, a mixture of chiropractic and massage. Then there was acupuncture. And then I think the fourth one was uh, um, martial art, uh, physical exercise. And none of them were the most important factor. Does anybody know where, which is the most important factor in any healing process, any healing technique? Huh? Yeah, it's close. It's the intention. Intention that you're actually doing the healing. More than anything else, 
You know, when you go to school and you learn acupuncture, you spend so much time how to precisely locate the point and you, and you really try to really memorize everything. <laughs> but as you get more and more confident in your technique, you realize that you try to forget of the rule. And what's the most important thing is the feeling, in, intent, intuition. This is the most important fact in healing. So when we are going to uh, apply this stimulation to the acupuncture point, please keep this in mind, you know, use your intention, try to connect with the cosmo. You'll be amazed of the result that you get. Because this technique really worked, by the way, it's really, I mean, of course, 4,000 years ago, the Chinese, they did not invent uh, a treatment for jet lag. Jet lag is just a modern disease, you know, it's only in the last 30 years that we have this term jet lag before it did not exist. Jet lag, it happened when we cross the time zone fast enough that our body don't, don't, cannot adjust to it. Okay, this actually, I forgot I was going to slip. Uh, this again, this is similar to the, the chart that you have. You know, these are the, these are the acupuncture points we're going to learn today how to apply, okay? Uh, at the center you have the clock that I showed you before, you know, with the uh, five to seven, this is the time, ST, and then, you know, LU stands for lung. We'll go through each one of them, then you can write it down, okay? We'll, we'll go through each of them. And this is basically the chart that shows you the time, you know, the same thing, basically. But we'll go through after together. Okay, this is the time zone that one I, was, I was talking about. And if you read that, it says, you know, uh, that fly with destination to the east from the point embarkation usually produce more symptoms than if you were flying to the west. You know that? Yeah. Yeah? You find usually a more, more discomfort. And, uh, and there is no jet lag when you fly from north to south because no matter how far you do, you, you, you are not crossing the time zone. It's only when you cross the time zone that and you, uh, uh, the National Astronaut, NASA stands for National Astronaut. Anyway, the National Astronomical Society, whatever. They said that basically for each time zone, it need, the body needs one day to adjust. So for every time zone you cross, you need one day. So if you were coming, if you come from Europe, I suppose you're coming from Rome. I think there are six hour difference. So it will take you six days to adjust. When you go to America, it takes you two weeks. Yeah, it's... Because it's 15 hours. Right? Well, but this reality is really actually nine hours. It's 15 hours because we are counting the linear time. But in reality, there is actually, is actually nine hours. It cannot be more than 12 hours. There's only 12 hours separate apart. It cannot be more than 12 hours different. If you were coming from the East Coast, that would be the most difficult time to Bali. Then you cross the equator with the other side. But the equator, it doesn't matter. You're crossing the time zone in this way. So if you were, if you were coming from the East Coast, which is 12 hours difference from Bali, you'll be the maximum, experience the maximum, basically. 12 hour difference. So <laughs> we need 12 days to adjust yourself. Always more difficult. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. So how does it work? Basically, you know, let's suppose, let, let's, let's go back to, let's suppose we just, you are in Rome and you are, it's 12 o'clock and you are leaving for Bali. So at 12 o'clock, according to, to the clock, at 12 o'clock your body is working, is on the heart meridian. Right? The energy is focused on the heart meridian. So you're active, you're ready to go, you're full day, you're in the middle of the day, you're ready to do your things. But if you were in Bali, six hours later, it'll be six o'clock. So the energy in the body is actually yeah. in the kidney meridian. So and it's seven o'clock, your body starts slowing down, you start getting ready you know, to retire at home, you're in a complete different mood. So what we're trying to do here is to adjust 
the body from 12 o'clock to six, six, uh, 7 o'clock p.m., 6, 7, whatever it is, 6, 7 o'clock p.m. We're trying to tell the body that basically, hey, I'm going there, so I want you to start working with that time, with not this time. So what you do basically before you depart, and you can start also before you go to the airport, but generally speaking, once you go out of the airport, you start applying. It doesn't matter the time where you are actually, just to make it easy, forget about the time of departure. All you are concerned is about the time of arrival. So if where you're going is 7 p.m., what you're going to start doing is start applying, Tony stimulate the point that has to do with, with the kidney. So in this case, it's kidney 10, because 5 to 7 is the kidney time. So as you start your travel, every two hours, because it usually takes time, you adjust the point. So you start, you, you always start with the point of arrival, okay? No matter where you go. No matter, always refer to the point where you are going. So if, if the time where you're going at the moment is 5, 7, you start to apply the kidney point. And then as you travel, every two hours, you move to the next. So then from the kidney, you go to the pericardium, and then to the triple heater, and so on. So when you arrive in destination, you are basically attuned with the time of arrival. Because you already activated the kidney. Because you already activated the time. At, at, the, at the departure time, you already start telling the body, this is the time I want you, we're going to sink in. So by the time you arrive, your body is sinking with the, the rhythm where, where you are, where you're going. Okay, Does it, uh, it, did you understand the process? Arriving at about five o'clock in the morning. What time? Five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So you're saying that we start with the three to five a.m. point, and then we move on from there. You start with the. You say your arrive. Your your arrival time is five o'clock in the morning. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not your arrival time. It's the time. Well, yes, your location five o'clock. So yeah, you start. At the, before you, you, you leave Bali, you start to stimulate the point that corresponds to 5 a.m., which in this case usually is uh, small intestine. 5 to 7 is small intestine. Large intestine, I'm sorry, large intestine. 5 to 7 a.m., yeah, large intestine. Huh? Well, she says 5 a.m., 5 to, you say? Yeah. 5 a.m., so 5 a.m. is the, 5? 5 to 7 a.m., yes. 5 to 7 a.m. is large intestine. Or well, maybe because it's reversed a little bit. I didn't notice that. Uh, 5 to 7 a.m. is large intestine. So you start to stimulate the, the large intestine point. Then two hours later, you stimulate the next meridian, which is the stomach the point that corresponds to the stomach. If during your trip you fall asleep and you skip two hours, just skip them, go to the next, okay? Remember, you always have to apply the stimulation to the point of arrival. If you miss two hours, just forget about it. Just go to the next, go to the next, keep going. So that when you arrive, you actually stimulate, you are in, in tune with the cycle of your arrival time. Like um, 12 o'clock here, so in Europe, water will be six, seven hours before. Yeah. I mean, this is the time. You, you correspond the time here to the time it's currently in Europe, which is at the starting of the trip. Is that what you mean by the point of arrival? Uh, I said I should say point of destination, I should say more than point of arrival, because I'm not talking about the arrival time. No, that's what I mean. So it's the point that is a in destination. Time, a at destination. Right now when you start your trip. Yes. Yeah. yes. Before, as you are at the airport, you know the best thing to do, as you are at the airport, sync your clock to the time of arrival. So if the clock says it's 5 o'clock, then you start simulating the large intestine meridian based on this chart. You're going to have this chart with you, and you'll see then on the chart, it says 5 to 7, and it gives you the point. Right? Yeah. It tells you the point. Yeah. I'm sorry. So 
we are saying that when I'm at the airport in Bali, I arrive at five in the morning, but I sync my time to London time at the airport. Yes. And I live as if, and I work the points. So it's two o'clock in the morning. I work two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. Yes. 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 I'm lucky, the flight is a night flight, so I come in in the morning. I can start my day. That's, That's right. In, That's right. That Yes, right. And like I say, because it's a night fly, you're going to sleep, maybe you're going to skip two hours, just skip them, go to the next. Always look at the clock. Whatever the clock says, which is, is tuning with the London time, it tells you the point that needs to be stimulated. But I'm sorry to clarify, you said we start with the time we're going to land, arrive. So, so am I starting with the five o'clock in the morning and moving round? Yes. Or, or am I starting with it's one o'clock in the morning, so I started at one o'clock in the morning point, not the five. Oh, no, okay, sorry, yeah, it's sorry. confused, yeah, sorry. Uh, maybe uh, it's not the point, the time of arrival, it's the time of destination. So if, if you're leaving here at midnight and there is six o'clock in yep. the morning, adjust your clock to six o'clock. Yep. And that, then I do my points based on according, that time frame. according to the watch, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I shouldn't call it the time of arrival, she called time of destination. Yep. This one's completely different to the one that you had up there. There's the, uh, yeah, uh, they're, no. all, they're very different. Oh, it's different? Yeah. Yeah, but the time is the same. See, large intestine, five to Oh, it's kind of... I see, it's a little bit confusing, but mm. oh, so sorry. But I can't believe it. Just this. copy the one up there, maybe if it's. If it's uh, yeah, it's because this one usually you, you, we are used to see 6 a.m. on the left, and this one is on the right. Oh, this right, midnight's on the top. Oh my god, I can. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we just copy that one. Turn it upside down. It's upside down, that's what's happening. Ah. Huh? Yeah, turn it upside down. <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> turn it upside down and then it corresponds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Say on genius. At destination. At destination, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, the chart there that you have in there is actually upside down, you know, because midday should be on top and midnight should be at the bottom, yeah? You have the same things as well. Here is oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, the same, yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, the same, yeah, that's right. This one here, the midday should be on the top. I don't know how it got like that. But anyway, so this is the basic theory behind it. That, that's yeah. probably why the chart at the bottom there, you see, you, that's why you were saying 3 to 5 a.m. You said it was large and distant, now you have long. Oh, I thought it was 3 to 5. No, 5, five to 7 a.m. Large intestine. Yeah, you also have the clock here, by the way, you know. Just for, maybe forget about that. Just look at this one. Oh, no, do you have it on the chart? No, you don't have it on the chart. <laughs> Mm, so sorry. Just basically, yeah, turn it upside down. I, I didn't. I don't know why I got in this way. So, since now it is four o'clock, it is the the time of the urinary bladder. Okay, according to the clock. If you look at the clock, three to five p.m. U beat stands for urinary bladder, so it's the water time. By the way, th these also, you see there's those two pi that basically represent the element. I'm not gonna go into it because it's a little bit more, you know, it's behind our scope of this lecture, but this basically is the water element, red is the fire, earth element, white is metal, and so on. Uh, we're not gonna get into it, but anyway, five to seven is the urinary bladder, which is the water element. So we're going to locate the point that correspond to the... So what, what, what he's saying is basically at this time, the energy is speaking in the urinary bladder or the, the meridian that is connected to the bladder. And there is one point, every two hours, there is one point that is energetically connected to the cosmos, is particularly active. 
So regardless of whatever goes on in your body, regardless of what kind of symptom, disease, you know, going on, this point is the ability to harmonize the whole system, the whole universe inside yourself. Because it's energetically active. This is particularly uh, good when you work on people, elderly people, where the energy is very low. You know, it's very hard to tonify, to give energy to someone if he doesn't have it. So what you do in this case, you use the time. It's like you go with the flow. If the energy right now is in the bladder, I'm going to use point on the bladder meridian because I know where the energy is right there is very active, it's full right now. So I know that the body will respond faster if I use this particular point. There's a whole section of, uh, uh, of Chinese medicine, acupuncture, that's based on orary point. There's nothing to do with the disease. It's just all based on astronomy and where you are at the moment and which point is open at this very moment based on the longitude and latitude where you are on the planet Earth. This is a simplified version. Okay, so let's, you have, uh, have you localized the, the bladder point on your chart? Yes. Yeah, this point here, bladder 66. That's the active point. So, oh, I forgot to mention about the, the stimulation. You just need a very gentle stimulation. You can use finger pressure. The acupuncture point, the point can be stimulated in many different ways. With finger, with pressure, with heat, uh, electrical stimulation, vibration, intention, many different ways. Massaging, of course. So what we're gonna do now is just use the finger pressure, the most easy one, but you can also use any kind of blunt kind of surface from a pencil, you know, and just use it. Another, another very effective way to simulate it is heat. You know, if you have some kind of form of, <laughs> not a cigarette, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, in Chinese medicine, we have this, uh, we have, we use moxa, most of the specific herbs, like a big cigar that you burn and you uh, stimulate the point by applying, not directly, of course, but uh, heat, heat, just heat. And, and generally speaking, the heat creates movement, so it, it moves the energy, you know. It expands, yes. So... Both sides? Huh? Should you press both sides of the body? Yes, we always uh, apply the, the stimulation on both sides of the body. The point are always bilateral, always. Excess a couple of meridian, they're all on one side. Um, you wanna give me, can I borrow your feet? Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I wanna, because Let it's kind of hard to explain. Uh, it will say, you know, the location of the point is lateral side of the foot in the depression posterior and inferior to the head of the metacarp metatarsal bone. Come here, you should want to show you maybe. Maybe just sit down here and I'll, uh, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to see if it works. I never really, I never really done this, but, oops. So, give me this part here. So the point is located right here, okay? Can you see it? Yeah. Right here. This is the, 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 the feed meta, metatarsal bone is right there. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah. And by the way, anytime you apply some pressure, most of the time the acupuncture point, they, they can be sensitive, you know? So adjust your pressure according to the sensitivity of the point. Don't, don't bruise yourself, you don't have to... You, like I say, intention is enough. Intention. That's all you need. But it's good to get in touch with your body, it's good to massage, it feels good. So, so best... Go huh? It's gonna make you wanna go away. <laughs> 
What? She only got to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as proper as possible. Well, naturally, you should go because it's water time. Five to seven. Three to five. What did I say? Yeah, three to five is the bladder, five to seven is the kidney. So that's the water time. Okay, so you stimulate the point for 15, 20 seconds until it feels good, and then you switch to the other part of the body, and then you forget for two hours. <laughs> you can keep your intention, you can play around, yeah. So if I do this side, I then swap and do the other side so it's balanced? Yes, always, bilaterally, always. The same time? Huh? The same time? The same time? Yeah, if you can. The thing is, if you are sitting on an airplane, most likely you might, <laughs> you cannot do it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. So you can probably only do one at a time. Okay, so as we move along the clock. Huh? Yes, I need you. Five to seven, five to seven, if you look on your chart, is the kidney meridian. And the point that is particularly act active at that time from 5 to 7 p.m. is kidney, the, the, is kidney 10. Doesn't matter, but anyway, it's located, what it says, uh, on the medial, it's a little bit too technical, popliteal crease between, <laughs> it's basically a decrease of your knee, you know, I'll show it to you, you know. Um, um, it's between those, those two tendons. When you go in here, can you see? When you bend a little bit your, your leg, you'll see there is a crease there. It's right there at the end of the crease. Come a little bit closer, you should not go far. So can you point, you see the end of the crease there? Right here. Yeah, basically that's what I saw. It is right there and if you move around there you can feel there is almost two tendons there but the, the thing is always you know just play around and then usually you find it you, you know what the point is because they're, they're energetically active they usually there's a sensation sometimes the sensation is just locally sometimes it gives you the sensation along the meridian so you might feel like your sensation at the bottom of the feet because that's where the kidney meridian start it start at the bottom of your feet or you might feel it going out into your genital area you know on your back that's that's the pathway of the of the, of the meridian so just you know it's, At the end. Like you, it's easier to find it when you have your legs on the side like this or and then try yeah. to find it like this way. Open the other one, maybe that one there. Yeah, you see the crease there, the end of the it's crease. Right here. Yeah, a little bit more inside. Yeah, go, go more in. Yeah, more in there. Yeah. More like right here. I cannot. It's a little bit more like go inside. Okay? More inside? It's so. <laughs> it should, yeah. It should, yeah. Well, it should. I mean, no, I mean. It's, it's a sign that you got to. Yeah, it's a sign that it needs to be stimulated, basically, you know. How long are you supposed to do it? 20 seconds of each point. And you'll see that as you stimulate it, then the tension goes. After uh, the next time you go there, it feels better, you know. Uh, it it releases the tension. Basically, when. W Whenever a point is sensitive, it means there is some, generally speaking, okay, I mean, it's not always the case, but it means that there is a, a blockage of energy in the area. So by stimulating, you're actually activating the energy. Yeah, that's what it says. So this picture shows us on the left side of the body. Is that the case? It's on, if this is the it's left side, not both? It's always on both sides. Always on both sides. Side. Side. The meridian, yeah, it only shows one side, but the, remember the meridian are bilateral. They are on the left side of the body, they are on the right side of the body. Well, that's what, uh, when you said both sides, I thought you meant front and back, but you mean both sides of the body. Left and right, okay. yeah, left and right, yeah, always, always, always. So you do 20 seconds on the left, you do 20 seconds on the right. And it doesn't matter if you start on the left, on the right. 
while if you want to really talk, I mean, you can go so much into the detail because the urinary bladder, uh, I'm sorry, the kidney is a yin meridian, so I guess you should start on the right side because the right is yin and the left, I mean, you know, you can go on and on and on. Just stay to the basic. Stimulate both left and right. You can go so much into the detail with this stuff that you can, you get lost, you know. So what we're, what we're trying to get here is just the basic principle, you know that the body, there is a clock inside our body. That, and so what we're trying to do is to uh, align this body with the natural rhythm of planet Earth, you know. So, five to seven, we said, seven to nine is the pericardium. Now the pericardium in Western medicine is not really an organ. You know, pericardium is part of the heart, but in Chinese medicine, it, it is considered an organ. It's got different name too, by the way. But basically, the, I, the pericardium is the muscle of the heart, right? The peri goes around the heart, it's the muscle of the heart. And just don't try to understand, just take it as it is. <laughs> in Chinese medicine, it, it, it's kind of complicated to explain. It is, it is considered a meridian, it's got its own path, energetic pathway, and, and is active between 7 and 9 p.m. And if you look at your chart, here where it is. So pericardium 8 is in the middle of our, from the pericardium it goes down like this, that's the pathway. And uh, pericardium 8 is actually easy to find when you, when you, Make a fit where the uh, middle finger lands, that's the pericardium. It's usually between the second and third metatarsal bone, metacarpal bone. So if you just make a fit, wherever your, your uh, mid finger uh, touch the skin, that's the pericardium aid. And this usually is pretty sensitive, easy to locate. Yeah? Easy, very easy. Oh yeah. So this point is the character. You, know, you see, we move now from uh, the water element to the fire element. So pericardium is considered fire element. But that it doesn't matter for the treatment. You know, you don't have to. You know, you don't have to visualize fire or visualize water. All you have to do is really visualize the intention that you are stimulating this point, that you are balancing your body energetically. And you'll see that actually, if, if, you, if you experiment a little bit, you'll see that the actual at this point, they are more sensitive during the time they are active. You can really feel it, you know, they are more active, they are more sensitive. And like I say, a lot of time, you really feel a, sensa a sensation running along the meridian. Even if you don't know where the meridian is, you feel, you feel distant sensation from the point where you stimulate it. So, seven, uh, 7 to 9 p.m. is the pericardium. Then 9 to 11, we have, this, uh, this is another <laughs> Sanjiao, or in your chart, there's a T edge, it stands for triple heater. This is another one of those that is not really an organ. Triple, San, San Zhao, remember the word here, San Zhao? In Chinese medicine, mean San means tree and Zhao means cavity. So, uh, uh, it's not an organ, but it, uh, it controls the function of the upper, the middle, and the lower cavity. So it controls the function of the res respiratory system, the digestive system, and the elimination system. Okay? And, and also they call it a triple heater, triple heater, the three body cavity in a way. That's also, so when you see TH, that's what it stands for. And Sanjiao San 6, this is a funny point, this is a point that, when, when, I, when I first studied acupuncture, we were forced to learn also the Chinese name, you know, of the point. And our t my teacher was, it was uh, uh, in Sri Lanka, it was very funny. And, and so, uh, no, there's not, there's not a Chinese name, but anytime I, I think of this name, I always lie because you call this shit good. 
because <laughs> the name is Shiku, but the function of the point is also, because it controls the three body cavity, is also is good for constipation. So shit good, it stay in my mind, you know. I always call the point Sanjao Sid, shit, shit good. So by stimulating this point, <laughs> just know there is some contraindication. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the point, yeah. <laughs> this one is an easy point. Uh, I don't need you. From, if you place your hand on the wrist, Chris, you place your palm. This in Chinese medicine corresponds, we call it three, three, three chun, or a chun is an inch, so three inch. So just place your arm, your, your palm there. The point is at the end of your palm, in the middle line. There again, easy to find point. Very easy and very effective for constipation. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> and uh, but you put your finger like no, the, put the, put the finger. You know, if you bend your 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 wrist, you know, right here at the crease, right? Okay. You put it right there. Mm -hmm. So it's the width. This width is three inch. We're talking about body inch, okay? We, when we locate the point in, in acupuncture, we always use the body inch. This is one inch, this is two, this is three inch. So, you know, but right at the you, so you bend right here. That's the point. Easy. And by the way, you can Google anything. You'll find many point location on the internet where you can, you know, they'll, they'll give you the exact explanation how to locate it and so on, picture and so on. So, uh, where are we? So the next one, 11 to 1 a.m., gallbladder. Go bladder 41. This is also, uh, it's in, not also, it's in the pressure between the fourth and fifth metatarsal bone between the two tendons. Let me show you. This. Yeah. So. This is your fifth metatarsal bone, this is your fourth. If you just go up, you know, between the fourth and the fifth toe, just go up until the two bone meets. That's where the point is. Very sensitive. Yeah? Just draw, you know, you feel there is a depression there, right? Just go up until you feel the two bone when they meet. Can you see it? Yeah. That's it. There's the gallbladder 41 point. Very good point. <laughs> Very good for the waist. No, the position. Waist, waist, waist. Uh, well, we're not going to get into it. But anyway, that's the gallbladder meridian. <laughs> well, we, because you know, if, <laughs> if I start telling you what is the indication for the point, then you know, it get confusing. Just know that this is at this time between 1, 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. That's the active point. That's the point that needs to be stimulated. They're like magic point. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're like magnet. In this particular time, they attract the energy of the universe, of the cosmos. They're, you, they're connecting you with the cosmos. It's amazing if you think about it. It's by just stimulation, one point, you can uni unite yourself, you know. You don't need to know what it is good for. Just do it and put the intention to it. Connect with the star. Connect with the star, indeed. So is there a name of the star connected to the point? Huh? The name of the star connected to the point. Oh, this is a old trip. Did you understand what he said? He said, are the acupuncture point connected to a specific star? Because when I started tripping into this many years ago, I really tripped. And I went on for day and nights thinking, oh my God, there must be, of course, it is all connected, right? So I wonder. So at that time I was in Hawaii. I practiced in Hawaii for a long time. And Hawaii is also the astronomical capital of the world. There is more uh, scientific research going on about the star there than any other part of the world. 
So you know, uh, you know, a point like Hawaii, a point like the pyramid, they're specific points. They, they must have a correspondence to the body. Because, by the way, these 12 meridians, they're not just in your body. They are also on the planet Earth. Earth is a living being. You can apply this technology to any living being. It's a human, a plant, a mineral, a star, or the cosmos. Everything applies. So think about it. What do you think is the... What do the meridian become on planet Earth? What would be that analogy on planet Earth that correspond to a meridian? What would it be? The river. Yeah. The river. The river, they're born out of Mother Earth and they, dis and they, they distribute, they nourish the Earth. And along the path, there is the acupuncture point become the city, the harbor, where these goods are distributed, where everybody gets nourished by, by the gifts of the river. That's what the pathway, the correspondence on planet Earth. And then the river goes into the ocean. And of course, in Chinese medicine, we have the extra meridian, which basically corresponds to the ocean. So you can do, you can, tr you can do treatment locally pertaining to that organ or if you want to affect the whole system then you treat point according to the ocean because now you're dealing with a big space a big vo uh, energetic space so but when you do that you also need to know you what you're doing because you also have you can also screw up things <laughs> you know badly well badly you can screw up things of course you can so you need an understanding of, of of what this point do, not only locally, but also on the whole universe, on the whole cosmos. So, for the same way you're asking, when you apply a certain point, you're also affecting a specific point on planet Earth. So, going to your question, Hawaii is here. The belly is the why. Why? Because think, well, uh, if you think of Hawaii, Hawaii is the most isolated place in the world. There is more water around Hawaii than any other landform on planet Earth. So it's very yin. So when you think of the body, the most yin part of the body is the belly. This is the soft part. It's also a volcanic island. So volcano means there is an umbilical cord that connects directly to Mother Earth. So this is our umbilical cord, right, that connects directly to our mother. So this is the most yin part of the body. Hawaii is the most yin part of the planet Earth. When you, if you want to do some good emotional work, go to Hawaii. Fantastic work, transformational work. On the other side, you have the hardest part of the body. So the other side is, what is the, 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 the hardest or uh, opposite of water, the, most, this, the biggest desert on planet Earth? Huh? No desert. The Sahara, the pyramid. Yes. And if you think about Hawaii and the pyramid, they're directly opposite to each other. So here is the Hawaii, here on the back you have pyramid. And the acupuncture point to the pyramid is called Ming Man, the door to light. And if you know about the pyramid, they are facing Sirius, the star, the light. This goes on and on and on and on. It's a whole trip that you can go into it and start finding, you know, what is this point? Who am I affecting with it? My God, now I feel, wow, I'm really responsible now, you know. <laughs> you, know you know, if my size massaging this point, I'm affecting some, the whole planet, the whole Hawaii, I mean, you know. <laughs> or the whole cosmos, I'm just, maybe I'm destroying some stuff <laughs> far away. Yeah, that's, you know, it, you have, it's a conscious act of healing. That's what it becomes. That's why you have to have good intention. But, huh? I haven't figured it out, Bali. I don't know. But energetically, it's very powerful. You know, look at the magnet it is. We ca we're coming from all over the world to here to experience the Bali Spirit Festival, the spirit of this island. So even so, it doesn't matter big or small. It's the energetic involved, you know. So I, I'm sure it corresponds to acupuncture point, but I haven't figured that one out. <laughs> I'll let you know when that comes. Usually, 
right now, because not so much, you know, this was when I first started my study, I really wanted to get, I, you know, I was tripping on this kind of knowledge. Now this kind of knowledge come more through my dream. I might wake up in the morning and say, oh, aha, that's what it is. I don't have to think about it. It's kind of, it, yeah, it comes up, you know, naturally like this, you know. Okay, so. One to three a.m. One to three is the liver. And this point is very easy. Liver one is right at the corner of your uh, the toe of the nail on the inside. But then this is the whole meridian. This is all the, the, the liver meridian. Yeah, the liver meridian. So can you activate any of these points or does it has to be specifically on the liver? Well, these are the different, you know, along the, along the meridian there are many different points, but what, I'm te what, I, what we're learning here is the active point, is the point of entrance where the energy enters the meridian. Ah, I see. Okay? Each point is a characteristic. There is a source point, if you think of a river, you know, there's a spring, there's a, there, are, there, are, there are acupuncture point calling spring because they're the equivalent of a river, a spring where the water come out. And then we have connecting point where the two branches of a river connect. Well, the same is in the body where various branches of a meridian connect. This is a connecting point. It's an old analogy that you can apply to Mother Earth, to the human being, to the cosmos, all the same. So, from 1 to 3 a.m., the active point is the liver 1. And you can massage, and because the meridian is particularly active, yeah, it is more effective if you massage the whole meridian. You probably get some good result, but that is the point is more active. Okay, one time. Mm. Ah, okay. So, corner of the toe. It's right here. Better with your pen. Ah. Put it down. Right here. Can you see it? This point, by the way, we don't really nago puncture, we don't use them very much because they're very, very sensitive. <laughs> so very mild stimulation, it's enough there usually. And also there is not too much tissue, so it's very hard to go in with a needle. They're they're highly effective with just stimulation. And then from uh, the next one is the lung meridian. Good time. 3 to 5 a.m. If you think about, if you have any one in your family that suffer from lung, from uh, asthma or lung disease, you'll know that usually 3 to 5 a.m. usually is the worst time of the day. That's usually where they get their, their asthma attack. So 3 to 5 a.m. is the lung and the active point is the lung eight and it says you know, it's one tune one to one inch from your wrist so here's the lung meridian from the wrist of your from the crease of your wrist you put your thumb there it's right there that's one inch right there okay can you see yeah. so right here oh inside a little bit yeah you put your finger there, that corresponds to one inch, right? Oh, yeah. One body inch, you put it there, that's your point, right there. It's a, uh, talk about styloid process, that's the styloid process right here, just below, right there. You can feel it. Yeah. Okay, can we move on? Then five to seven, we're talking about five to seven is the large intestine point. Easy point, also is right next, is your index finger on the inside, you know, of the same, same like the liver one, you basically, on this side, on the inside, right there, on the corner, you know, at the angle between of your nails, right there. You can see it's pretty easy, you know, to locate, yeah? yeah? 
So again, large intestine one, that's the entrance point at this time. Five to seven in the morning. Yeah, five to seven in the morning, right? Yeah, yeah five to seven. Yeah. Then uh, we have the stomach meridian. This is one of the most powerful points of the body. This, you can use this point anytime. It's one of the most uh, homeostatic point in the body. It brings that whatever you do, it's always balance the body. It is energetically connected to your stomach, so it's good for digestion problem. So especially when you travel, sometimes you know digestive system go off. You know, it's a very good point to stimulate, and it's particularly active. Uh, seven to nine in the morning and you want to give me the point is no. uh, from the knee okay it's a nice oh, can you see it when you are on the knee it's not there it's not uh, because it comes out yeah come closer you see Okay, not too much, maybe. Uh, okay. okay, so this is the knee. On the knee, uh, there are two little fossils that we call the eye of the knee. You know, you can look at them, the two little indentation there. Yeah? yeah? So, you, what you are concerned is with the one on the external side, you know, on the outside. Basically, one, once you look at that, place your palm there. And where it, where it ends, it, the point is right there. So it's three inch from what we call it the eye of the knee. This is the eye of the knee. Put your palm there, where it's right there, three inch below. This is a very powerful point. This one you can definitely feel if you, once you locate it, it's closer to the tibia bone, okay? More closer. It's, it's gone in the picture. It's gone? Oh. Oh. When you look at this point, it usually gives a sensation going all the way down to your feet. It's a very powerful point. It does, okay. Okay, this is your bone. It's one finger to the side and then... And so, three, four fingers below the eye of the knee and one finger to the side of the tibial bone, right there. And my God, you should feel this one just running down your leg. Mm -hmm. It actually... In Chinese medicine, Susan Lee means three miles long, and that's another one we make a joke about this point because sometimes it gives a sensation that it's three miles long, you know, especially when you stimulate with the acupuncture needle, it gives a very strong stimulation. And it, it's, I know it is the most useful point in the body and most powerful. Let me show it to you. So this is the eye of the knee I was telling you. If you just place from there your palm, we're right there. Yeah, right there. Okay. Remember, it's not here, it's here, okay? Mm -hmm. Right there. Here, but I don't no, 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 no. It, it's better if you bend your knee a little yeah. bit. So this is the, you feel the eye of the knee. Okay. You place your palm there. Okay. Right here. Um, what is your palm? It could be maybe a little bit wider. From, from this way? Yeah. So, so. you can, so it's right there, yeah. And it's, it's, yeah, right there. Okay. Any best with thumb or does it matter? Well, you, you better use your thumb here because, you know, it requires quite a bit of, of uh, pressure to this point to feel it, you know. So if you use your thumb, you, I think you can usually, you probably get stronger. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely need your thumb in there. You need to push it quite a bit. <laughs> Oops. Anybody need some help to look at this point? This is such an important point. <laughs> yeah, we're screwing ourselves up pretty bad. <laughs> I forgot to say there was a there was a side effect to this lecture. 
you don't use it. Yeah, we don't. Please. We don't have the. We don't put the intention. Yeah, that's right. Don't say. Don't put the intention in that point. Okay. Cancel. <laughs> Control. Delete. What do you say? Ah. Just want to make sure that the stomach works. This is the eye. Yes. This is the knee. Put your palm right. I'm oh, sorry. Put your palm right here. Okay. So I was right now just to, yeah. to make sure. No comment doesn't work. to do without this. No, we need that. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Switch that off and back on again. Is that the... Uh, you want to do it? Seems like it's the... the well, maybe, or maybe... The projector. Okay. Yeah. It's your fault. Cool. <laughs> Takes a while. Okay, try again. So did you all find stomach 36, the three miles long point? I think when you turn it off, it takes some time, it has to cool off maybe the, the, the bar. The next point is spleen three. Yeah, uh, spleen is the meridian, three is the point. Yeah, yeah. Each uh, meridian has, like, stomach has like forty-four point. Uh, spleen has twenty-one or twenty-two point. So usually the most uh, effective point are always located between the elbow and the finger, and between the knee and the feet. As, as in fact, if you see all of these points, they're not located in the body. The key point, the most uh, powerful energetic point, are always located from the knee down and from the el elbow down. They're always located in this part of the body. But the meridian line run all over, and there are points in the chest, there are points in the face, there are points everywhere. Yeah? Do they all run the one point? Huh? Is there like a terminal where they all meet? Uh, well, when you remember what I was uh, t uh, doing the analogy of the ocean, yeah. where the river meets, and then that's basically correspond to the correspond to the, uh, so the navel. where they meet. Uh, the, yeah, the center. Yeah, the navel is the center. By the way, that's what actually they're all born out of. They're all born out of all the energetic are born out of the center. Here is the center of the body. Is where we conceive a baby. Here is the is a. Uh, the Hara, the Tan Dian, is considered the, the center of the energy. So everything is born out of here. Everything is born. So that's why also in Chinese medicine, when you practice or Tai Chi, you always focus. You, you, the energy, the strength doesn't come from your arm. It's always come from here, from this area of the body. And this is, by the way, is one of the most powerful and energetic uh, point. Uh, uh, to stimulate energy and sexual energy too as well. <laughs> but this point here is very good to stimulate energy in the body. I had piercing there as extremely damaging. Piercing? In there, yes. Not yeah, I su <laughs> yeah, I suppose energetically it oh, here you come. Energetically yeah. I bet so. So spleen tree. Uh, tai Bai, on the medial side of the foot in the depression proximal and inferior to the head of the first metatarsal bone. Mrs. Yeshila. So this is the metatarsal bone, it's right there, spleen tree. Okay, uh, what is this bone called? I don't remember. 
styloid process? I remember. Right here. You know, if you, if you go to the top of your bone and just go down in that depression, that's where it is. Yeah. Also pretty sensitive. Mm. Huh? Yes. Good. What make what make points so sensitive on some people and some people they are not? Well, some points are just because of their anatomical position, they're more sensitive. And other time is because, like I said, maybe the energy is stuck. There's a blockage in the area. So, it, you know, if you think about it, when the energy stops flowing, it builds pressure. There's a, there is a blockage. It builds like a river. It builds pressure, 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 pressure. So mm -hmm. that particular spot becomes tender. So when you apply the stimulation, you're actually kind of breaking up the pattern and allow the energy to flow. Yeah. And that's really what we're doing. You know, we're really applying, telling the body, hey, the energy is here right now, I want you to work at this time, you know. So you're calling the energy into that meridian, which basically is in tune with the, with the time of uh, arrival. <laughs> no, at, at destination. destination. <laughs> time at destination, yeah, that's right. So, spleen tree, and then we have the heart meridian. Heart 8, uh, and that is from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. That is then the fire. That's the fire element, of course. And also, this is very easy. You know, when you make a fist, the point is right at your, at your uh, little finger, right here. That's the point. You know, you make a fist, where the, whatever the, middle f the, the little finger touch the skin, the point is right there between the fifth and fourth metatarsal bone. Also sensitive. If I may say again, the interesting thing, most heart attacks happen at that time. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, most heart attacks, they happen at this time and they happen on Monday. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Yes. You remember Deepak Chakra was saying that. So we're the only uh, You're right. human, not human, but uh, animal yeah. that knows how to live on Ma to die on Monday. <laughs> 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 it's a record, you know. No other animal is such a record. Somehow Monday has got bad reputation. <laughs> okay, so you got that point. Pretty easy to locate. Yeah. We're almost there. Actually, I think we are there. Ah, no, one to three is small intestine. That's important. Mm -hmm. One to three p.m. is the small intestine. And the small intestine, it says, is... Uh, uh, in the depression to the head of the ulna. This is the ulna bone. It, that's a kind of tricky to find it, you know, but basically once you find the ulna bone, the tip, you just go in. And if you do like this, you feel the point opening, like this. If you do like this, you close it, but if you bend your wrist a little bit, you'll feel the point is open. It like, like there's two bones there. Yeah. You feel the opening? Yeah. And actually, if you twist it to the inside, even better. That's how we locate this point, because there is a bone there. It's almost impossible, so you have to kind of twist, drop the, drop the wrist and twist it to the inside and you'll see that now you can really go in there. So that's a, a point for the small intestine, 1 to 3 p.m. And that's it, because then we're back to 3 to 5, which is the time right now, which is the time of? You remember? Bladder, yes, urinary bladder. So we have accomplished uh, our whole cycle around the clock here. We, are, we have gone through 24 hour cycle. So remember that each meridian is active for two hours. So as long as you do the stimulation between those two hours, you, you're fine. And as long as you keep going, you know, so then after the next two hours, you follow the next meridian. So the energy uh, you, you saw on this on this chart here, 
I'm sorry about the screw up chart there, but it moved in a clockwise direction. Yeah? Clockwise. And it goes through intestine, stomach, spleen, heart, and so on. So are you clear about what point to stimulate next time when, before you leave Bali? So wherever you're going, just set up your time, set your clock to the time at destination <laughs> and start stimulating that point. You look at your chart and you start stimulating the point. And every two hours you go through this clock and stimulate in the next point, the next point, the next point. And by the time you arrive, and by the way, don't stop at, at the time when you arrive. You can keep stimulating the point for the next 20, I would suggest at least for the next 24 hours, just keep going. It depends how far you go, you know. If it's just two or three hour difference, not a big deal. But like you were saying, if you are coming from the East Coast and there are 12 hour difference, you bet. You, you, you can, you can keep stimulating the point for a, for a one or two days, you know. It's a good practice. Yeah. You know, on, on the night flights, would you say it's more beneficial to stimulate every two hours or to try and sleep through? It is better that you start to apply the lifestyle at the time at destination, whatever that is. So, if a destination is 6 o'clock in the morning, you should not try to go to sleep. No, but I mean, say you're on a night flight. So yeah. So you're going to arrive at 6 in the morning, so you have the opportunity to sleep and get a good night's sleep in, try and get some sleep in. Do you recommend sleeping or waking up to stimulate every two hours? So you're leaving here at what time? I leave here at like 7 in the evening. And I arrive at 6 in the morning. Yeah, in this in this case, yes, it's nice, it's, it, it is, it is, op yeah, it is good to get a good night's sleep. So not, not, yeah, not as important as waking up to sleep. Yeah, because also you're going from, from east to west, so you're going with the cycle of time, so it's easier. If you were going to the opposite side, I would say no. But generally speaking, as a general rule, you want to start to apply uh, uh, the lifestyle of uh, arrival, you know. So if at the arrival time is noon time and it's lunch time, have a meal, st start telling your body, you know. Start teaching your body to, to live according to the time at a uh, destination. That's the basic thing. And of course also they always say, you know, try not to drink coffee, don't drink alcohol because they dehydrate you. So drink a lot of water. Even juice I heard, you know, especially the orange juice they serve on the airplane. No. <laughs> You know, so drink a lot of water. What is that to come to us looking for when you look at your tongue? For what? What is that to come to us looking for when you look at your tongue? To needle the tongue? No, 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 just to look, to look at your tongue. What do you think uh, acupuncture? Well, there is no acupuncture point on the tongue. This is one of the forbidden area. Uh, the tongue, the tongue is, is, a, is, a, is an organ that we use a lot for diagnosis, you know. Usually when we do a diagnostic in Chinese medicine, we, we feel the pulse and they look at the tongue. So the tongue has three different, more than that. The tip corresponds to the heart, the mid body corresponds to the, to the uh, digestive system, and the root corresponds to the water system. The side correspond to the digestive system, to the bladder and the spleen, the uh, liver and the spleen. So I will have to see the time to tell you what point to use. Well, yeah, I mean, usually you look at the tongue because, you know, the color of the tongue, uh, if there is coating, it tells you the, 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 what's going on inside the body. Now, I don't know uh, why you want to treat your tongue, but. For, for, for diagnostical purpose? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it has to be done individually, you cannot generalize. generalize. And actually, sorry, uh, when I do diagnosis in Chinese medicine, I trust more the tongue than the pulse because in today's world people take medicine and so the pulse is very much affected by medication 
And so sometimes, you know, you feel a pulse going fast or strong, but maybe it's because of medication they just took. While the pulse, the tongue stay more, uh, give a clear picture of what's going on inside the body. Unless you just drink coffee or, or drink jamu, you know, the local drink, and your tongue is all yellow. <laughs> Turmeric. <laughs> Turmeric, yeah. Yeah, you familiar? You know what uh, jamu is? It's a, uh, you should try. It's a very healthy drink. Um, it's very yellow. Very, very yellow. Like gold, gold color. Huh? Turmeric, turmeric. Turmeric. Usually you want to drink, drink it uh, empty stomach. Very good for the liver. Detox. We always uh, drink it in our house uh, early in the morning, first thing. The beginning it feels a little bit bitter, but then once you get used to it, really, uh, you, acqui you acquire a taste for it. They sell it at cafe, at cafe restaurant. You can almost all, well, all. the natural restaurant here that they serve turmeric. Uh, or jamu, it's called jamu in, uh, in Balinese. Okay, I'm open to question, you know. I'm pretty. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, for my work, I do a lot of night shift uh, work. Sometimes it's just one, sometimes it's seven. So you are in the same time zone, but you have to change your day night frame. And I was wondering, is this useful to do? Yes, of course it is useful. But what should you do? Should you then change the, 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 the hours? Because then you're working in the night time and you're sleeping in the daytime. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> That's tricky. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is a particular case <laughs> that I wouldn't. Um, you know, you cannot do any damage by simulating this point because you're always activated. You know, you you, you uh, energetically activating your body. But then but stay to the, the the real time then. Except when it's one in the evening, then just. Yeah, you use the real time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you don't want to screw up, you know, start stimulating the night. No, 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 don't do this. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, I wake up, then, like, for example, at 8 in the evening, and I start working at 11 till 8. Yeah, but you still have stimulated the point according to the timer you are. <laughs> no, you can. <laughs> it's a good experiment. Try and let me know. <laughs> I never thought about that. It's a good idea, you know. Why not? You, she work at night time, so reverse the body cycle. Well, actually, you can't. I mean, because you know, the body is not you deciding. The body goes according to the cycle of the Earth and yeah, according yeah. according to the Sun. So, yeah. you know, you can't not reverse the cycle. You can help to tune in to the cycle. You know, sink in with the cycle, but you cannot just reverse it. And. Uh, unfortunately, there's people that do this kind of work, you know, they, do, they work, their shift is at night time. They certainly do tend to experience some, dis some discomfort, you know, especially when uh, it, it, it uh, applies year after years yeah. after years, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's not, it's not uh, you can do it, you know, uh, for a while, but in long, in long term, I mean, it, it can create some, some, some major imbalance in the body, for sure. Uh, I'm yeah. a doctor, so I have to do a You're a doctor? Yeah, so you have to do ah. like this. Yeah, I thought maybe, well, think of the people, I mean, the, uh, that is not too bad. I would think people that work on the air, uh, airline industry, yeah, that's, uh, that not only they work at night time, but they fly from uh, full yeah, time zone. How do you adjust to that? You get to travel around. Yeah, you keep traveling around, yeah. Yeah. Or north, and that's north or south, but the time zones go east and west. So yeah. It's more affected if you go east and west and then drop down or up according to the speed of the earth? No, yeah, I was hoping that somebody will ask this question. No, the speed of the earth has nothing to do with the jet lag. It does not affect the jet lag. That was just an interesting fact. Yeah, okay. just an interesting fact, yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like when you are in a car and you're driving at 100 miles an hour, you know, you don't, you know, they all. You know, the atmosphere of planet Earth is moving with you. So that's why, you know, you, it's, it's not like going on a motorcycle in 40 kilometers and the wind is blowing you out, you know, you, have to, you know, the whole atmosphere of planet Earth is moving with you. So that's why you don't experience anything. You don't, 
you don't feel it. So the various speed of planet Earth, don't, it will make a difference if you go from the North Pole to the equator, of course, light system change, you know, you, maybe you go from 24 hours daylight to 12 hours. So that will, yeah, that will create a difference for sure. Um, but, the, uh, but the speed of the, of the speed noise is not a factor, no. Yes. It's been really helpful, and it's got a known anti-sickness point. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a symptomatic point that is very well known, you know, and as a matter of fact, they also said they, they sell this bracelet with a, yeah. a magnet in here. Yeah, that's called pericard. It's part of the pericardial meridian. It's very easy, you know, if anybody wants to know it. Know it. It's, it's, it's a sick, they call it sea sickness or air travel sickness, car sickness. The Balinese, they call it car sickness because <laughs> they, they don't, they're not used to going car. So when they go in car, they get sick very quick, you know. But anyway, uh, it's basically from the wrist, from the crease of your wrist, you place your palm there. It's just like a full three, in, three inch, basically, you not know, right there in the middle. And usually you can feel the sensation going, going up to your finger when you stimulate it. And uh, the, the particularly, they call it sea sickness. Cis what do you call it? Seasick, right? Yeah. Uh, it's very effective for traveling. And also, if you have nausea, hiccup. Hiccup. Hiccups, yeah. Very, very good point. And nausea, the, you know. Um, the last thing was, um, do you have any suggestions for managing menstruation um, pain through a point? Yes. The most important point, I don't have it on the chart, but is a uh, spleen six. It's a is a point. Um, let me look at it. I'll show it to you. It's it's a meeting point of three meridian: the liver, the kidney, and the spleen. And it's a very well known point. We use it generally for all kind of uh, menstrual cycle problem. So from, it's from the tip of your malleola bone, you just place your, again, it's easy. Place your palm there, and it's just four finger right here in the middle, right there. From this side? Yeah. Okay. Very effective for any kind of woman's problem, you know? From fertility to menstrual cycle to painful menstruation. From fertility? Yeah, as well. As well. And there's a point that also responds very well with heat therapy, with moxa. We apply a lot of moxa in there. Very so good. Yeah. <laughs> Here we come. Okay, well. <laughs> Any other question? Sinuses are sneezing. This point here. That's the large intestine four. These are all, see, what you're asking now are all symptomatic treatment, which they work, you know, but you're, in Chinese medicine, you know, again, you usually, you, always, you have to treat case by case, but this point here is very, uh, when you close your arm like this, the highest point of the muscle, and then you relax, and the point is right there. That is probably the most sensitive point of the body. Uh, it's also the most effective also for, uh, for uh, controlling any pain, any pain in the body. Most effective for headache, facial headache, but also for general pain, migraine, yeah, for general pain. Oh God, this is so sensitive. You want to feel it? <laughs> very, very, very. You no, know, first yeah, you close, you locate it, then you relax, and then it's right there. It starts. Yeah? Oh yeah, you got it there. Yeah, usually not very, really, very, you know. You start here and it goes up and you end up like this. So that's why it's good for sinus. It opens up the nose and uh, uh, also for eye congestion or... Oh. But mostly for sinus, all allergy, okay. right there. Well, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, heat, damp, cold. This sort of thing, yeah. they describe in Chinese medicine that you've got too much damp, too much... Yeah. Can you... I, I appreciate it's probably a, a massive question, but 
Can you give me an idea of how that, what that means and how that connects to the meridians and the organs? Well, these are, you know, like, because we are not separate from the environment. So if you live in a, in a place where there's a lot of damp and humidity, most likely you're going to have damp humidity in your system. As a matter of fact, I, I, uh, I do some work at the, uh, what's I, 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 uh, which is the birth center, you know, and I mean, it's like 90% of the time you see a condition of damp and heat, which is typical of the weather. We are, it's humid, it's damp, and it's hot. We're in the tropics, so damp and heat. Translating into symptoms, damp and heat tend to uh, produce mucus, uh, heat symptoms like fever, uh, sinus problem, of course, you know, digestion. Accumulation of damp tend to slow down everything, tend to slow down the, 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 the movement of qi and the movement of blood, and tend to slow down the metabolic system, you know, and it swell up. Plastic, you know, you swell up in your face. And uh, extreme damp heat, then you can hear also infection. A redness, a swelling in certain parts of the body. Generally speaking, just damp tend to slow down, especially the, the uh, and then each metabolic fact, uh, external factor has an effect on certain organs. So damp particularly affect the uh, earth element, which is spleen and stomach. So that's what they're talking about. And it, it manifests a lot on the tongue. You can see definitely the tongue. When there is a, a, a thick coating on the tongue, that's usually, it means there is a lot of damp retention in the system. In, in the woman also a lot of discharge you can also create discharge, you know, because again it's damp con accumulating and, and generally speaking it tend, you know, fluid tend to go down, you know, affect the lower part. But it can also affect, you know, the sinus, you know, of course, you know, yeah. damp. But can you uh, help the symptom by changing your diet or, you know, if you yeah, of course. Well, you have to avoid damp food, fried food. Any kind of food that creates damp, avoid it, you know. So just like the Ayurvedic system, it sounds like. Yeah, well, Chinese...